a hat on, she had a muffler wrapped around her face, and a long coat and galoshes, and she was covered with snow from the blizzard, and the light from the street showed the storm blowing in. As she stepped inside, I said, ma'am, there's a chair down here in front that's vacant. She was crying, and she just shook her head and stood there. I was talking on astringents, and all of a sudden, uh, I said, I would like to tell you what to do for pyorrhea. And I said, if with the pyorrhea you're bleeding at the gums, or the gums have peeled up, if the teeth are loose, I said, using the oak bark, leaving it in all night, every night, within a very short time, within sometimes a week or two or three weeks, those teeth will tighten up and the gums will heal. And uh, I had no more than finished this and started on my next subject, and the door opened and this woman stepped back out again into the storm. Well, I never thought anything about it. I let it go, and so I finished this class, and two weeks later, uh, we had a, a class each week there, and two weeks later, uh, the storms had abated, and it was a pretty decent night, and we had a packed house, and there was a new woman sitting down close to the front here, and I got up to the podium, I used to always stand and do my lectures, two hours, three hours, four hours. I don't anymore, I sit, I'm lazy. And a woman raised her hand and said, could I say something please? And I said, why, well, yes. And she said, a short time ago. Hey everybody, hope you enjoy these back, and taking these off VHS. I started to notice Bring that on. my you? gums were bleeding and the gums were peeling up. And then my teeth started to get loose. She was in her middle 30s. She had 32 perfect teeth. She didn't have one filling in all of her teeth. But every one of them started to loosen. One of the worst cases of pyrrhea I've ever heard of. Well, she went to her local doctor. They lived in a town hundreds of miles from Salt Lake, several hundred miles. And he looked at her mouth and said, I have never seen such a case of pyrrhea. He said, this is the worst I've ever seen. Well, she said, just tell me what to do because surely there's a cure for it. I've got 32 perfect teeth, not a filly in them. He said, I'm sorry. But he said, I'm not even qualified to pull them. But this is such a severe case, what will have to be done is that the teeth will have to be pulled after the impression is made, the gums trimmed down, and false teeth put in. And it broke her heart. He said, uh, I'm not qualified, so I'll send you into a specialist in Salt Lake City. She said, well, he was a fifth rater, but she knew when he sent me to the specialist, the French specialist would take care of her. So she went into the specialist in Salt Lake City, and he checked her mouth, and he said, in all my years of practice, I have never seen such a case of pyrrhea. What can be done for it? They can be healed, can it? And he said, it cannot be healed. Nothing known in medical science today can take care of a case like this. He said, I will take the impression today. And he said, when you come back in two weeks, I'll have your false teeth made up, a personal order. And he said, when you come back, he said, I will pull all 32 teeth, trim the gums, put your false teeth in, and he said, then I'll make you some permanent ones later. She said, I went back to the hotel because it was too late to catch a bus to go to my town. I went back to the hotel in Utah. I walked the floors. I didn't want to lose those 32 beautiful teeth. And she said, I can want to even live. But I couldn't sleep, and I was so tired, exhausted. But I just walked back and forth, and finally she said, I put on my great coat, my 
scarf around my face so I wouldn't catch more cold in my teeth and it hurt my mouth. And put on the galoshes and I decided to go out and walk. And she said, I walked the streets of Salt Lake. I don't know Salt Lake. But she said, I just walked. I walked. And I didn't know where I was. And she said, I, I passed a phone booth and I thought, well, maybe I'll stay on the street. I can find that phone booth when I come back. And then she saw that there was a, a big store window with a light around it and the curtain pulled. And she heard someone talking inside. She chilled. And she thought, if I could just step inside and get warm, then I could uh, go to that phone and call a cab and locate my hotel again. And she said, I stepped inside. And as I stepped inside, and you asked me to come up front and I shook my head, you said, we will now discuss Pyria. She said, if you said any other word, I wouldn't have stayed. But Pyria, this is my life right now. And I stayed. And when I heard what you told me, she said, all the weight of the world lifted off my shoulder. She said, I knew what to do. So I opened the door, and that was when I saw the door open a second time. And she said, I went up to the phone, called a, ca called a cab, and got back to my hotel. The next morning, I went to the first health store I could find with Hope Park powder in it and, and got some. And I didn't wait till I got home so I could do it six nights a week. She said, I put it in right now. And I went down to the bus station to get my ticket. She said, I had to write the message down. <laughs> and she said, I went on home. And you know, I kept that in 24 hours a day. And when I went back to the dentist, in uh, just a few days, I was so amazed, I went back to him, a fifth-rate dentist in my town. He looked and he said, I've never seen anything like this. He said, it's a blessing of God. He said, I've never seen anything like it. He said, I could cancel your appointment to the specialist. But he said, he's got to see this. And so she, he sent her on into the specialist. And she said, I was in there today. And she said, he checked my mouth. And he said, in all my years of practice, I have never seen anything as astounding as this. And he said, there will be no operation. There will be nothing. He said, you've got 32 perfect teeth. And so she said, I went back to my hotel room and I thought, well, I've got to stay and, and stay over because I've got to wait for my boss. And I'll tell the folks at that class about this. And so she came in and boy, did she sell them on White Oak Park. I mean, they were really sold after she got through because she peeled her lips back and showed those beautiful teeth. I'd like to tell a story about the, the White Oak Park also. As soon as I listened to that uh, the tape on that story on Pyrea, I thought it was absolutely amazing. I listened to it again and again. I said, this is, this is incredible. <laughs> no sooner than I listened to the tape, I went to a class that I had in Pittsburgh, and a friend of mine came in, sat beside me, and he looked really depressed. And uh, I said, what's the matter? He said, man, you're not going to believe this. He said, I just came from the dentist. <laughs> the dentist told me he had to pull all of my teeth. I said, no, I'm not going to believe this. I said, why? He said, pyrrhea. I jumped out of the chair. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> No sooner than I heard that. He, he said that. And uh, I told him about the oak bark, and he went and got the oak bark, and a couple weeks his teeth were hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. I like that. Thank you very much. You know something, folks? Sure, I can sit here. I've had these experiences for 40 years, and I can talk and talk and talk. But when we have someone to rub shoulders with us, like has happened here, you don't understand. Oak bark is from God. Oak bark is loaded with calcium. Oak bark is loaded 
with the very things that we need to rebuild the system. And it is an astringent that makes the tissues come tight and close together. And that is why we get these terrific healings. It is astounding. We now have a, a tooth powder that uh, many doctors are using now because as we meet with our doctors twice a month, they, they tell us that they have seen amazing things with pyrrhea by people who are using this tooth powder and putting that up between their lips and their gums. You know, it is the nastiest looking stuff you ever saw. It's dark and dirty looking. It's got peppermint and got a lot of things in it which doesn't give it a beautiful white toothpastey look. But it's a tooth powder that is in it. But it works. And that's the main thing. It works. If they will take care of their body and go into the fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds, the 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 um, diet that we teach, they will never have problems again. It can be rebuilt. We have seen amazing things now with the tooth powder and with the calcium. They both do the job. The calcium is a little easier to take. But we have had a number of students and a number of our patients who have complained about our calcium. They've actually complained. And I ask them why, what's the trouble? Well, they say we've been using it for a period of time and now the fillings are falling out. Oh, no. <laughs> One fellow said he lost five in the week. The fillings are just falling out. Well, the price of gold and silver is going out of place to hang on to that anyhow. But I've told each of them to look into the mirror and uh, see what's happening. And they take a double mirror and look in. And new enamel is coming in. And when the new enamel comes in, it pushes out the fillings. And it's a new life. It's a new way to go. It's beautiful. What about mercury fillings? Aren't they poisonous to the body? I would just leave not have them. Yes, mercury fillings are 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 dangerous, really. There is some malfunction with silver and gold fillings eventually, but they are the least harmful. But over a period of time, until we learn how to grow our own. Teeth, new teeth in, how we learn, and you know, every individual, as you know, has tooth buds on top of tooth buds waiting to come in, and we have history of a man in Mexico who has his fifth set of teeth, fifth set, and the buds are there, and all the good Lord needs is a little cooperation on our side, and instead of eating processed garbage, Eat some of his good food. Things will happen. We had, I had one of the fellows at work came in and said, uh, I've had some time off there on my uh, gums trim. And uh, I said, why don't you try the rebel tooth powder? So I, we really you know, didn't believe in this too much. And I said, well, I'll try it anyway. I mean, he didn't want to go through that before the other fellow said. And about um, a week later, after he got the rebel tooth powder, he came back and he says, the bleeding is stopped, the gums are starting to heal, and the doctor says, uh, just keep up doing what I'm doing, and I probably won't have to have it uh, done. And he doesn't. That was months ago. That's beautiful. All right. There's, there's so much of this evidence. It's there. Uh, one, one of the nicest things that happened, kind of crazy, but uh, one of my patients, an old timer, came in and told me about his pal that was living with him. He says he's getting up in years and he's lost all his teeth and he had dentures uppers and lowers. He said he went into the dentist to find out why in the world those dentures weren't fitting anymore. The doctor pulled out his teeth and looked in his mouth and he says, of course they don't fit anymore, you've got new teeth coming in. <laughs> now he, he was up in years and he grew his third set of teeth. Now this was, this was one right in our own area. He grew his own set of teeth 
And this was because, as this man said, he had been vegetarian for years. But he said, you know, I wonder, the last year or two, he was more fruitarian than vegetarian. Now,